what's up guys it's your boy board student irl and today we're back for another mod review this time we're going to be looking at refined storage now refined storage is a well-known mod in the modding community it is a storage and auto crafting mod it has been updated to 1.16 for a little bit now so you can have it in your 1.16 mod worlds which is really awesome i will be providing the curse forge link in the description but without further ado, let's get directly into it. Okay, so in front of me, I have the materials that you need to get started in the mod. Now you need to be pretty far along in terms of mining in order to get started in the mod and really use it effectively. And we're gonna start on the left-hand corner and show you what you need. So the two very, very basic materials that you're gonna need are silicon and quartz enriched iron. Silicon is obtained by smelting nether quartz, so you need to make sure you have yourself lots of nether quartz. And then quartz enriched iron is iron crafted with three nether quartz. So obviously you're gonna see you need a ton of nether quartz to get started. And then uh, you can see right here this processor binding. You also need a lot of this, and this involves slime and string. So make sure that you have a good way of getting slime and string before you get started in the mod. Now then, the first uh, big three crafting items are the raw processors. You've got the, the basic, the improved, and the advanced processor. The basic processor is made um, with a base of silicon, and you need the processor binding, of course. The improved processor is, is gold, and the advanced processor is diamond. And you can see, of course, you're going to need yourself a lot of valuable materials and these are are all a very base crafting material most of the items in the mod require one or more of all of these and then these are the finished products and you basically make these by smelting them in a furnace it's very very easy all you need to do is craft these uh, pop them in a the furnace you get the finished processes out and then finally in the end, end here we have the destruction core and the construction core um, they're some more advanced versions of the processors and these are also kind of a base crafting material they're gonna need a lot of and these are made using these right here so they're basically like another another tier up uh, so to get started in this mod make sure that you have lots of all of these materials at the, at the very least lots of the raw materials required to get started all right so now we've talked about the raw materials to get started let's take a look at the first few actual blocks in the mod all right so over here we have your first basic refined storage setup that you're going to want we're going to start over here with the controller now this is a creative controller so it's infinite power but uh, a normal controller you have to provide power to it now re refined storage by itself does not have a power generation source however there are there exist many mods that can provide a power source to it uh, one big one for 1.16, of course, is Mechanism. Highly recommend using Mechanism as a way to uh, supply this with power. And this can accept any wire from any of those mods on all sides of it. You just have to plug the wire into there, and then it'll provide it with power. And the system is going to need more power the more uh, machines slash blocks are on it. So just make, I would make sure that for a basic system, you can get away with a very scant power generation, but as you add more blocks onto it, make sure that you have a pretty robust power generation system. Now, moving on over here, in order to actually use this, uh, the first thing you're gonna need to do is make a disk drive right here, and then make disks right here. Now the disks are where items are actually stored, and you can see right here we have a regular storage disk and a fluid storage disk. It, which means you can store both items and fluids in the system, but we'll get on to that later. Uh, but for now, all you need to know is to, to put items into here, you need to have a storage disk. And we have, uh, and there are a several different tiers of storage disk. We have the 1K storage disk, 4K storage disk, 16K storage disk, and the 64K storage disk. And basically what they mean is you can see on the tooltip storage zero of 64,000. So it can store 64,000 items. This is the biggest one, of, biggest uh, storage disk, of course. Uh, and there's 1,000, 4,000, 16,000. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's pre pretty like straightforward upgrade. 
Uh, and then down here we have the storage part, which these are part of the crafting recipes. But what they also do is um, if we take the 1K storage disk right here, uh, this is a completed crafted one. If you shift right click on it, it actually gives you a storage housing and a 1K storage part. And now what you can basically do with this is you can move items to different disks that way. Um, like if you get, if you take the storage part out of a storage housing, um, you can actually craft it into another uh, storage disk. So it's a way to kind of upgrade your disks. But that is basically the storage disks. And so when you throw a storage disk in here, you can see on here, it shows you zero of 128K. We have 64K uh, fluid storage disk. We take it out. 64k and then in order to put items in all you need to do is craft yourself a grid like this one You can see right here and all you have to do is just pop items in just like that And so now you now if you go over here uh, You can see it should say on the storage disk that it's stored um, and Then there's also another type of grid which is the crafting grid right here and if we take a look at that and by the way, if all these blocks are touching each other, they'll they'll all be part of the system. The crafting grid allows you to craft items directly out of it. So for example, if we take these four oak planks right here and make ourselves a crafting table, we can make one crafting table like that, very cool. But you can see it keeps these filled with the rest of the oak planks that are in there so we can grab more crafting tables out of there. So very, very neat way to craft with all of your items in here all at once. So you can just, and it even works with just enough items, as you, you can see right here. Um, so if we go, let's look up a crafting table. Crafting table. We need to get out of cheat mode first. And if we shift right click right there, you can see that it will directly let me craft it just like that. So it, this is a super useful I, um, item to get for your system. It's not super hard to make. Um, and you can see on the side here, there's a couple of different tabs that you can use. Um, you can turn your crafting grid off. If you use this, you can toggle it, only work without redstone signal, ignore redstone signal, only work with redstone signal. Uh, uh, you can display, uh, this, this display is something that I'll touch on in part two of this video. Don't worry about it just yet. Sorting direction, it's uh, ascending and descending like amount of items. So descending, it'll put the most amount of items first and then so on. Uh, and then you can sort them by name, ID, last modified, quantity and so on. Um, you can you can change the search box so you can actually search in JEI. So JEI is also a super essential mod to get with this, but you can see if we go crafting table, it'll search in JEI as well. It's very nice. But yeah, that's the crafting grid. And then a couple of other items that are on here. This is a cable. This is also, you're gonna need lots of this. So you can connect to different blocks on uh, for a refined storage system with this. So if a block for refined storage is either touching another block or is touching a cable, it is considered part of the system. Over here we have a relay and the relay acts ju just like a cable as well, but you can turn it off with a redstone signal so you can actually shut off part of your system if you want to and you can see you'll be able to see why that's relevant in my in this in part two of this review but you can see that you can toggle it to only work without redstone signal ignore redstone signal or only work with redstone signal so it'll block basically the the current through this and it won't work okay now over here we have the storage monitor which displays how many items there are of a certain item in the system. And currently I have it configured to oak planks. So if I shift right click on the storage monitor, you can see I put oak planks in here and it's displaying how many there are in the system and you can display items or fluids and exact one on, on or off. Um, and it's nice aesthetically and you can also get the items directly out. If you left click on them, if you right click on them, it'll put the items directly back in. And if you shift right, uh, shift left click on them, it'll give you one of the item. So it's a very, very neat little block for storage viewing and purposes such as that. Let's move on to talking directly about the disks and about fluid storage. 
Okay, now over here we have our storage disk, which we already talked about, but there's a little bit more information to go along with them. So, first of all, we have these storage blocks over here. And now these were just the same as the disks, except that you can place them in your world and they can store stuff in them. And you can see that our items from before over there are actually already stored in this one. And uh, these ones are really more for aesthetic purposes than anything else. Um, but they are nice to use anyways, and you can make, a, make them a priority as well. So if you, for, for a certain item, if you want it to go into a certain storage block, you can make it a priority up here, um, like that. And if you like the, the higher that you put the priority, the more priority it will to send items that are coming into the system into this certain storage block. But yeah, uh, so those are the storage blocks. We've talked about the storage disks. And over here, we have uh, fluid storage disks, which are pretty straightforward, obviously. You can put fluids <laughs> in the disk. Um, but the way to actually do that is you're going to need yourself a fluid grid. You can see right in here. Uh, and if you take a bucket of any kind of fluid, including any kind of modern fluid you can think of, pretty much, you can put it in there and you can see we have one bucket of water in there. And now for these, when it says a K right there, 64 K is one bucket. So it's a thousand millibuckets. So it makes, makes sense, right? And uh, the storage parts work in much the same way that the regular ones do for the regular disks. And to get the, the water back out, make sure you have a bucket in, in your inventory and all you have to do is right click on it. And with all the sorting, it works the same way as the other grid. And then fluid storage also has fluid storage blocks as well, which also work in the same way. But what all of these disks can do is they can be used in the disk manipulator. And that disk manipulator is a very, very awesome block in it and is very essential if you want to do some very specific manipulation of disks, obviously it's in the name. <laughs> uh, but let me show you something really quick with how you actually use it. Okay, so here we have a 64K storage disk that has 256 wood on it. And over here we have a storage disk that is a 1K storage disk and has nothing on it. Now we can transfer to this storage disk if we put the 1K storage disk in the disk drive and we come back over here and we put our 64k right in uh, we want to make sure that we're on insert into network and what it'll do is it'll insert the items from this storage disk back into the network and it's specifically putting it into that disk that you're that you just saw over there and you can see it's going pretty slow but there are speed upgrades that you can apply to this which i will be touching on in the next video of course uh, but for now, you can see it's it's just slowly moving it to the 1K storage disk. And you can see over here, um, you can it's, a, it's got some redstone modes as well. You can do items or fluids, and then you can blacklist or whitelist certain items as well. And you can also extract from the network. So if you were to put an empty 64K storage disk or even one with space in it uh, in the out slot right here, and you did extract from network you can see that now it's going back up and it's extracting it from the network so very useful way to manip to um, do different things in your system and transfer items between disks especially if you're low on resources and you want to make sure that you're using one disk to the absolute best of its ability or even if you want to have uh, specific items on one disk and specific items on another one because you can set priorities on disks as well just like the uh, storage blocks and you might want uh, a certain disk to only have certain items on it who knows it's your system to do with as you please as the beauty of refined storage you can do so many different things with it but anyways that is all of the basics for storage in refined storage and getting started as well. Next video, we are going to be taking a look at transferring items in and out of the system without doing it manually and auto crafting. 
I hope you guys are excited to see that. I've got lots to show you guys with that. But for now, this has been your boy, Board Student IRL. Thank you very much for coming to my video. Peace out. Thank you.